Hello, everyone, and welcome to Answer the Call. Uh, this video or this uh, podcast is titled "What Arena Commander Needs." Uh, the The inspiration for this was it was either the monthly report or roadmap roundup. I can't remember which one at this time, but one of the updates were around Arena Commander, and I think it was the monthly report. And the primary thing that they said that they were going to work on was Arena Commander maps. And the Arena Commander team, just for note, is a team that is apparently working on Arena Commander, Star Marine, and Theaters of War. Uh, but in particular, we want to focus on Arena Commander today. And obviously there's like bugs and issues with Star Citizen, but how I view Arena Commander uh, is basically a place where the best of the best go to compete either one-on-one -on -one or group versus group. And basically what that leaves is players like myself or any average player uh, or below average or even above average player kind of left aside and just unable to compete at all in that game mode. And the other aspects of the game are there's nothing that entices me to play the game mode in the first place unless I was trying to be the best of the best. How many people out there are trying to be the best of the best in anything? Very few. So at this point, Arena Commander has no purpose is how I look at it. What would it need to create purpose? Um, one of the things and, the, and the, the key thing here that kind of bothered me, but as I thought on it more, I came up with some reasoning behind it, and maybe this is the direction that they're going in, is their main focus was Arena Commander maps. Is Arena Commander maps really what Arena Commander needs? Let's look at what whatever that company was that that took over. You know, they're they're now out of my mind already. Uh Fire Sprite that took over Arena Commander. All they did was update two maps that we already had and what did that do? Didn't really entice anybody else to play it. They maybe checked it out. Some content creators made a five-second YouTube video saying how cool they look or something like that, and that was it. That didn't really bring what Arena Commander needed. So why would adding additional maps make that change? There's only one thing. What one map does Arena Commander need? There's only one. It's a map with atmosphere, something that would simulate being on a planet. That would be the only map that I feel Arena Commander needs is a planet side Arena Commander map. Other than that, I don't see any justification for a new map. I think every ounce of focus should be around everything else about the game mode. How does the game mode play? Uh, one, one v ones leaderboards, rankings, all sorts of things like that uh, have come across my mind. Now, I've invited the first two callers here to be people who I know as arena commander enthusiasts, these kind of top of the top guys. And then everybody else is random. Whoever wants to come in and discuss what they feel would bring arena commander, what would bring them to arena commander is really important. And the last thing that I want to say before we move on to the callers, arena commander should be a, and it could be the perfect test bed for ship composition, components, weapons. And it just isn't. It's frustrating. So let's bring in our first caller. Our first caller is Virgil, friend of the show. Probably been on the show more than anybody at this point. Hello, Virgil. Welcome. Hey, how are you? What's up? Uh, you're not Moist Noodle, by the way. I, the one thing I forgot to do was change the names. So, uh, yeah, this is something you and I, uh, like, immediately after watching the or reading the update on the monthly report, I immediately reached out to you and was like, well, you're, you're an Arena Commander guy. Uh, yeah. what do you think? Uh, like, I'll tell you, I I'm not gonna score many points with the YouTube 
like viewers and maybe some of the guys in the Twitch chat, but like I just want to be like as transparent as possible to like you know do this topic justice, right? Well, and that's then, gonna like. Then I think you'll score some points. I think that you know honesty and and everything is is yeah. important. Yeah, and I it like. <sighs> I mean, to what a, does Arena Commander need, right? Like, it's not it's not another map. Like, yeah, like theaters of war would be nice, and you know, an atmospheric map would be nice. But the problem, like inherently, is that you know, and as you said, is like new players like aren't aren't welcomed into AC by the way that the um, modes are set out. Like, yeah, now like the most toxic trait of ac right now is that every player is worth the same amount of points so like if you you know would have come in or like say someone was to come in from like your stream right and you know they had just bought the game if they don't come in with a a good ship you know like the the problem is is the direct food for the veteran player base that's inside there exactly um and that's how i felt and- when when um capacitors came out i was Mm -hmm. i got into a lobby with you and not you i don't think you might have been there actually but it was basically your org and every other top pvp -er. and i went one in 12 every time Mm -hmm. and if i got one it was like i i was just a not even a third party i was like a fifth party and just happened to get the lucky shot you know and the worst thing is right like Say, like, if I was in there, um, and, you know, I've been in there a lot this patch, but say if I was in there and there was someone else, I'll throw a random... Uh, Space Cutlet cues it a fair bit, right? Okay. Space Cutlet, you know, if he was trying to win the lobby or win the leaderboard, which is, like, you know, many lobbies, he would directly want to go after you. Again yep. and again and again. You know, the fastest way to win... Is to, is to kill the bad player, the weakest guy in the lobby. Yeah. yeah, and like that's the sad reality of it. And the problem is, is there's not many answers. Like, um, I don't want to steal um, Panda Bot's thunder because I know what he's going to suggest. So I'll just leave that out of there. But like, you know, the, every player's worth the same amount, and the community's not big enough to like start separating lobbies with matchmaking ranking. Right? Like, you can't have just the good players versing each other in the battle royale lobby and you can't have yeah. the newer players versing each other because there's not enough people to separate you're going to end up with lobbies of three or four people you know maybe two different ones the community is not big enough to separate like that so but why is know, it like, not big enough to set like i don't there's a possibility i think that if you if you just created uh rank based matches and everybody started at zero you would start separating and then and then as the casual people came in that maybe that would build a a lower lobby the last, above, but i doubt it i think you're right but there's in the last small two chance. years like the biggest it's ever been is two full lobbies which is yeah. 32 players so like it it won't peak higher than that right and that was like a very rare occasion like if you go if you go into a lobby and it's fill of 16 players then you know it's a big deal you know and um so it's just it's so hard to split that up right and the problem is is all the other time of the day you know like now for example you're gonna be lucky if there's two people in there right now there's probably not even two people in you know like um and that's the problem right now like the only solution is the modes right um one, if you want to keep things the way they are, or even in the future, this has to happen. Like it's the only way I can see it, apart from what Panda is going to recommend. But um, is like players as they're not succeeding, you know, become worth less points. So for example, if you went one in twelve in a lobby, after your second and third death, there's diminishing returns on how many points you're worth. Right? Like that's interesting. You're now worth half. And then you die the fourth time. Now you're worth a quarter. You know, you die a fifth time. You're worth 5% of what you were. And then six, you're not worth anything, right? And that's the only way to encourage the the good players that are in there all the time from farming the bad players. And I'm like directly of guilty of this. Like I, 
I killed like 300 people before I died and it's not be it's because it was like really bad to go after the good players like you're directly trying to lose if you're doing that or you're yeah. not playing to the advantages of it so you know, I have a it's, question it's then really uh go just for a, it. yeah with the changes to the map one of the things that they made uh with fire sprite was that the maps were larger so uh in the past, the maps were really small. So if you were if you were going after one single individual, well, you were probably going to be close to other people in a battle royale. Now, if you're going mm -hmm. after an indi individual, it takes a little bit of time for somebody to get over to you. So do you think that that kind of equates to your ability to go 300 no against uh, you know a bunch of kind of people like me, let's say? Not not because really. Like, if anything, if anything, I think it was like the radar ranges that kind of helped that out. You know, okay. like I wouldn't because at the same time, like detecting people at different different ranges changed. So, you know, like not that I've noticed. I mean, it's probably there, but it's very marginal. Um, yeah. But like, you know, what did those maps create? Yeah, they made them as aesthetically cool and. Um, they cost a lot of frames too. Like every, like that was a downside, right? It was like you go into the PU, you were averaging 30, 40 frames like back then. Yep. And then you go into AC and you'd get a hundred. You know, that was part of the upside of it. Um and the new maps, you know, shaved 30 off the top, which really bothered some people, and some people couldn't even play it anymore, right? So that was also a downside to these new maps, is they're usually, you know, so heavily designed that one of the great things about AC, which is where the game runs the smoothest, um, it actually started running, you know, far worse. They've polished mm. it since, but, you know, not to the standards at which it was. And that was one of the great things. But, like, and the thing, like, we need to hit on your podcast that, like, you know, do the developers just um, justice, you know, like, or to give them the feedback that they need to is that it is, like, extremely toxic as in, like you said, as a new player to go in there, like you are preyed on, you know, like, and I'm, I'm guilty of doing it. Every player, there's not a content creator. There's not a player in any organization that is innocent of, you know, well, why would that. you be? It's, it's how you win yeah, and winning you're is not fun. trying to win. Yeah, exactly. If um, you're not doing it, you're not trying to win. Exactly. Yeah. And it's a hard, it's a hard problem to solve because you know, like it, it's not a, it's not as easy as you'd look at it as in other games. You know, you separate it from MMR. Oh, that's the easy one. To, but there's no more than really, you know, 30, 40 players that are frequently queuing it. And then there's a bunch of people that try it out one time, you know. Okay. Or, well, let me ask you this you know. then. There, how I see this is the battle royale mode is very much like the Call of Duty mode for arena commander right and the yep. difference between arena commander or star citizen and call of duty is well in call of duty you can't before you ever see the player lock onto them and know that's who i'm gonna go for you you yep. you only you, you come across who you come across and your fights are more dynamic whereas mm -hmm. in arena commander you choose the fights that you're going to to pick uh, does yeah. battle royale even as a mode make sense? Is it fun? Maybe, but yeah. does it does it make sense oh, as a mode in the first place? I'm so happy that you bring this up because that was like I got that as a bullet point. It's just yeah. fucking delete battle royale, like yeah. for sure. Because you know, in a like, and, and there's multiple reasons as to why to do it. Right? It's mm -hmm. a because. It's the good players preying on the weaker players and competing against each other. Like, good players don't have a net interest in fighting other good players. Like, if you're trying to win the Battle Royale lobby, then fighting someone that's good in that lobby is going to slow you down from winning it. Like, it's actually hurting your score to do that. So, yeah, okay. absolutely delete it. And then what would be the fallback option if you delete it, right? You've got free it's fly, which is just whatever. Garbage. Racing, you know, garbage. Not, yeah, it's, yeah, you've got racing. You've got Vandal Swarm, the PvE stuff. That's Let's take that off. But, yeah, um, let's ignore that. And then you've that. got squad battle and duels. Now, duels uh, oh. is what BRs essentially is right now, right? Like, yeah. you're in one view. Like, you're fighting by yourself, you know, for your own team, and you're trying to win. So there's the duel mode. For the people that want that one v one itch that you get in BR right now, what do you think um, about dual mode currently? Let's let's touch on that for a second. 
That, I thought that was I a good addition to a single time. I, I thought that was a good addition to Arena Commander, but the problem is, is uh, anytime I've queued into it, there's nobody there. Yeah, I don't think anyone particularly cares for it. Like I, I don't know. I, I feel like you it's would. It's funny. Though. I don't, I don't. Not you yeah, in particular, and, uh, but people would. Yeah, and I'm I'm surprised as to why it's not picked up. To be honest, like you bring up a fair point. Just I think because Battle Royale is just dual mode, but they're constantly coming at you you know you don't have to wait for someone to queue like okay and people stay in battle royale right like if you were to go in a you know dual mode and you were to say like verse i don't know panda bot for example right and you you'd have the five duels which is what it does and then it kicks whoever you know you out you know you don't want to re-queue and get panda bot again do you yeah you know so like Maybe the idea is if you go into BR, at least there's seven different 1v1s you can have with seven different people. You know what I mean? So, like, maybe you can okay. kind of pick your own fights that way. Maybe that's the upside to it. But you, you're right. It surprises me that it hasn't picked up that much. Um, but I'll tell you this. Like, what I'm trying to arrive at is I think squad battle would be far more um, positive for the community because then the new players are playing shoulder to shoulder with the good players. You know, it promotes camaraderie and teamwork. You know, it introduces you to people because in battle Royale, you're not getting introduced to, to anyone. Are you, you're getting introduced to them shooting you for points, you know, like it's, yeah. um, but when you're thrown on, onto a team, you know, like naturally you're going to build those relationships with people. So, you know, if you ask me, if it was me behind the controls of like how this is developed, it would be, and I think the perfect sweet spot um, is a squad bi squad battle being the, the core of what AC is. It would be deleting Battle Royale because mm -hmm. I just don't see it, find a way that they could make that pos a positive, you know, welcoming community. Um, and it would be that as players succeed, they become worth more points. And as players, you know, um, struggle, they become worth less. Because the problem is too, right? And I know this is what Panda's counter argument would be for me because we talk about this all the time in our SM Discord. But like, um, it's going to be the same problem unless it, you do, unless you add those kind of um, players are worth X amount of points based off their performance. Because otherwise, it's just going to be good players preying on weaker or newer players in squad battle too. It's going to be the same problem. So it's got to, you have to fix it that way no matter what. But I think the ultimate solution is squad battles being the core of AC. And okay. yeah, as you succeed, you're worth more. Because that way, you know, as say, you know, um, Panda Bot starts to get three or four kills and he hasn't died yet. Well, now he, we directly want to kill him because he's worth the most points, you know, like, and that actually encourages people to go after the players that are performing really well in the lobby and you know, not just prey on the newer players, etc. Um, sure. Now, another reason that this would really work, I think, is because, and a lot of people don't realize this, um, but is the way the game is being developed is ships are being developed for roles, right? I was now, about to go. I'm glad you brought this up. Yeah, I was just, yeah, it, I, I was going to cut you off and you went right into it. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. So like, there's only a couple or a handful of fighters that are there strictly for to one v one to perform in one v ones, um, and most of these ships are you know to perform roles you know in a squadron or a fleet or whatever, right? Um, you know, you if you go in with a missile ship into AC, you're not going to do well. Um, if you go in like with in a saber um or you know a talent or um you know a talent there may be a little bit of an argument for but like if you go in a saber or a hornet you know like you are food you are the food that everybody wants to eat you know you go in a cutlass black everyone's gonna gun it for you and it's gonna be the first p p person to get you you know like if if you were to queue and some reason you can queue with an Andromeda right now, you know, the entire lobby is going to be on you and they're all going to be trying to compete to get the most points off you. Yeah. But when that, when it's in a two team environment, you know, you can actually, there's a wider selection of ships you can bring to maybe complement the group. Now, the problem is I wish the game balancing was good enough to do that. But the reality is right now is that 10 arrows beats any 10 of anything else right like it's and that's where we so, are with the, with the game balance that's but what i was least, gonna bring up 
is Go I, the whole squadron battle thing makes sense. But what if each team was... It, I, I think teams are of five. So mm. if each team had to choose a specific category. Yeah. Oh god, and, yes, yes. Yeah, so you have you have your one light fighter or Oof, two light yes. or two light fighters, let's say. You mm -hmm. have um and and then I don't know what we would categorize the other ships as necessarily like one yep. medium, two heavy yeah, or two one heavy medium, one medium. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like an interceptor, you know, yeah. and that yeah. Uh, and 100% and that's what this is where this is where it sounds really fun. Yeah, yes. but yeah, right. So, and then you start. The right you can, but then you can even go like even further and take it into like League League of Legends, uh, exactly level where you're like ban the arrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh right? my god, ban the arrow. Stop it, stop it. <laughs> ban, ban the hurricane, and then yeah. and then you start getting some really really interesting things. Oh and that's god. where I go into like <laughs> Arena Commander could be the perfect. Uh, like testing ground with with these kind of things is like you you can make this game mode something and and you could oh take, it could be really special yeah, yeah yeah it could be really special you could take what works in other games and apply it to this one but CIG is so reluctant to just do what works and it it drives me insane ah mm -hmm. and I'll tell you what like. Oh, like what you talk about sounds like heaven, man. Yeah. It, like, and it would totally work. It absolutely would work. Like, you know, and the thing is too, is like the reality is, and I have a disagreement with the flight guys that develop flight, like on what, how they perceive balancing and decide balancing stuff, mm -hmm. but you're going to know really quickly, you know, really quickly you know, what the balancing looks like in this game if there was a mode like what you're describing. You'd, yeah. You'd have a very clear understanding and the entire community would have a very clear, quick understanding of what ships sit where. Yeah. And the problem is, right, is like, you know, say, for example, like Frog Boy would, were to go into PU. He could kill a bunch of people at Jump Town with a saber, right? Yep. Like, But the problem is, is the saber's not good. And the saber is going to be food for any if he goes into AC. Like, so the problem is, is there's this misconceptions in the PU about what ships are good and what ships aren't. Like, you can make any ship work, but they still don't come close to each other in balance at all. Like, yeah. you know, and I think in a mode like that, you're going to get a real clear. You would get a real clear understanding of yeah you know, where all these ships and where all these weapons sit and. Yeah, you're no, gonna see. Would be... You're gonna very easily be able to see the uh, cat and mouse or the rock paper scissors in in, in mm -hmm. these situations, and it, it just it, it should make it much much easier for them to just go. Yeah, this isn't working for this particular ship. We would have to make this change. I, I, again, yep. I think we can go all the way back to conversations that we've had in the past uh, about like slowing the speeds down, and they're not really willing to do too much stuff until that happens, which is like whatever. Let's let's let them do that. I think um, I wasn't happy when they talked about capacitors originally, and I think that those have been somewhat successful. So I kind of just will hold off. But the the um, what what a perfect test bed and what a what a quick and easy way to see how all that stuff plays out in ship v ship combat uh at least in space for now and then maybe in atmosphere if they ever add yeah, a, an atmospheric map like the like they look what they do is like they pull all these statistics together and they use that to like and it's not the be all end all. I know that, and they're on record saying that. But when you pull statistics from the PU, it means nothing. Abs like absolutely nothing. Like, and I mean, it means something. When you put, uh, I don't think so though. Like, I, I Why? think if any, like, I well, I think that they're actually under the conception that, um, like the saber performs well because everybody just loves to fly that ship. And so they're cool just looking. using it because yeah, right. But I don't think it. But like, measures where are they? Up yeah, but like, where are these metrics even coming from? Like, oh, the saber does well in PVE. Okay, like, yeah, I I argue with you too that yeah, I'll, if you're using PVE statistics, like guys, I mean, the fucking ships don't even move and shoot back at you like like for the last five years. So yeah. a lot in in a lot of ways, those st statistics are always going to be skewed because we don't even have what the general star citizen experience should be yet i just don't think that like 
I don't think that statistics serve like I don't like you're right, but I don't think that they serve any purpose at all, right? Because they can just be misunderstood and interpreted differently. Then how like, would Arena fly- Commander change that? Because Arena Commander is directly competitive, like okay. by its nature, you know, and it's and it's a focused, you know, repeatable combat mm-hmm. that doesn't involve you spinning up a ship. It doesn't involve you spending money. Like all these ships that people are using aren't you don't buy them with real money. You buy yep. them with rec, which is the AC currency. So, you know, when and, and you're directly, you know, like if you were to test, say, a hundred fights at the PU, you're talking like weeks, you know, like almost, you know, or sorry, days and days and days. But in AC, you're talking maybe an hour or two. You know what I mean? Like, because sure. you don't have to get out of your hab, call up this ship, all this stuff, go fly it to X Ride location a train. where, yeah, like all that jazz, right? So, you know, I just think that the data makes what would make more sense in AC and stuff. But the problem, okay. like the reality is too, is that like the the ship balancing is a huge problem right now too. Like. There's no reason to, like, and as you said, like, you, if you were to maybe be able to banish ships, then you'd be banning the imbalance of the game, right? You, if, if everyone, you know, were to pick, ban three ships, it's the Arrow, the Gladius, and, like, ne- to soon be the Blade, right? Like, those are the top three ships right now. So you'd be banning those, and then, you know, it'd be up in the air what would be good after that. But the problem is, is those ships should be good anyway. You know, like, and that's the problem, right? Is when you balance the game based off these roles, but these roles don't do that well. You know, like if you wanted to, and the roles don't even exist saber, aside light fighters, exactly. right? They're barely undeveloped. They're very undeveloped, right? Like, if I was, if you were to say, oh, you know, I'm going to jump town with the stealth ship, it doesn't. That doesn't mean anything. Like, yeah. it means it that you're to. hard to detect by 500 meters, which is nothing. You know, like. So, or, you know, and there's some ships that, like, work and stuff like that at these other roles, but, you know, they don't achieve their goals as a role well. So, you know, and we'd be banning ships that are super meta right now to make the game more fun instead of, you know, like, imagine if you didn't have to ban these ships and they were actually worth picking because their roles were really good. Like, imagine bringing in a missile boat was actually very viable competitively at a high level. It, yeah, it I think isn't, the banning like, thing would be would be really fun and a really nice addition to it when there's more to the game than, than oh, just flying be, light fighters. It'd be good now, but the problem is, it's like, is you'd always ban you the ban same those ship. ships. Yeah, you'd ban, you'd ban the, the top three ships and then the game would be interesting. Because the mm-hmm. reality is, right, like if you were to delete the blade, the Gladius and Arrow out of the game, this game would actually be more interesting. Like, it'd probably be more fun, you know? Yeah. Like, because we'd you'd get to fly all these other ships and we'd be discovering what's the best then and, you know, we'd be in all these ships that we haven't flown for years and years and years, you know? Like, yeah. if they deleted... If they just deleted those three ships, I'd be... It'd be like rediscovering the game for me, you know? Um, <laughs> and I think a lot of people. So, yeah, I'd... Like what you guys are saying is true. It's just yeah, light fighters need a nerf. And the problem is, is if you want to be competitive in like a ten v ten or whatever, it's it's not to bring two sentinels, a couple of sabers, an interceptor, and a large multi crew. It's to just bring ten, 10 arrows, arrows or ten gladiuses. Yeah. yeah, like you know, and and that that just scales to whatever number you need. Say there's fifty fifty ships, you know, on one on each team. That it's gonna be fifty gladiuses and arrows, you know, and that's the sad, unfortunate state of the balance right now. Um, yep. I'd also say too, like I think the key, but to loop this back around, right? Like, what does Arena Commander need? It needs to promote a culture where we are welcoming newer players. Now, we're fortunate enough that there's some content creators. You know, shout out to uh, like Jason. You know, all these guys that are, you know, Moist Noodle, Avenger 1, that are welcoming new players into PvP yep. and AC and all that stuff. Um, but the game itself doesn't do them any favors. Um, you know, I'm part of the problem. Anyone that is, you know, playing the game is part of the problem, um, you know, competitively in AC. Um, and I think that the mode 
and the way that these points and what does winning an AC look like are the direct fixes to what the problem is and they're going to bring people in. A new map, yeah, cool. That'll be exciting for a couple of days, um, but it doesn't address any of the issues that are in there. Um, and it is that it's welcoming these new players. Um, and I think that they like they plan on like um, Bunton, who's you know active on Reddit and all this stuff, um, and he's the guy that's in control of like the AC modules and all that stuff, the modes and all that. He's a CIG developer. Big shout out to him. One okay. of my favorite developers at the company, um, DJ Bunton, but, you know, and he, he gives, you know, has so much community outreach with all, with everyone. It's, it's honestly really impressive, you know? Um, and I think that, you know, he's got some work teed up, um, that, you know, he's been on Reddit talking about and stuff like, um, that, you know, sits probably a far away you know, on the list of things to do, but you know, he's immediately made it a lot better since. Um, but the 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 work that needs to be done, it's not by the art team spinning up a new map. You know, nope. It's it's the mode. It's it's the way the points work and stuff Incentive. like that. That's gonna yeah, I, bring I people think in. Like you like you talk about making a culture, huh, somewhat. But I think what needs to happen is is groups like yours need to just be overwhelmed uh, by regular people, and there yeah. there needs to be a reason to play the game aside from uh, a leaderboard. Uh, I don't know what it would be. I don't know if 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 it takes a skin, if it takes uh, awards in the PU. I don't know mm -hmm. what it would be to bring people because it it isn't wreck. And it isn't a leaderboard because we have both of those yeah. things now. So what would it be? That's how I look at it from my perspective is you got to bring me to the game, but you have to bring more than just me because I think I'm one of those people who really, really does want to ex not excel at PVP, but I do want to get better at it. And uh, sure, AC might be a part of that, but what what is going to bring me to it? In the end, Arena Commander is a, a video game inside the Star Citizen universe. So mm -hmm. how do we take Arena Commander and, and bring incentive to your average player to come in and, and enjoy the game? Obviously, I think our discussions around improving the game modes is what's going to keep them there. But something has to get them there in the first place. And yeah, I, and I we don't spoke know about what that is in DMs a bit, yeah. right? Like there's, if you were to look at like the, the way that other games do it, like, and I've got the world of Warcraft background. So, you know, maybe like some spectrum flares or something, you know, yeah. like, I mean, that, that wouldn't that bring me in. Prestige. I would say that personally. Um, yeah, I agree. But, um, like ship skins, maybe I think like ships themselves would be what, what if uh, you use, deal. Um, but, ships, yeah, maybe, but... I'm, like, talking, like, exclusive ships for the top 100 players on the leaderboard that finished at the end of that patch or something I, like I that. I mean, here's the, here's the deal. Well. Yeah, like, yeah. Arena... I'm sorry, but content creators get access to ships for a short period of time all the mm -hmm. time. And mm -hmm. why why wouldn't something like the the top top 100 top 10 top whatever get rewards like mm -hmm. that too like we we get rewarded for doing the things that we do why not get rewarded for for playing yeah. the game at a, at a high level i don't see anything wrong with that uh nope. you know like i mean man jace you know you mentioned him earlier was he not the top kills at jump town the first go around did he get anything for that other than a, a shout out which is obviously very very cool but mm -hmm. how sick would it be to get a you know, some sort of special item in game. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. That'd be I, sick. I don't see a problem with it. Yeah. Yeah. That, right. That makes sense with me for me. And like, but like, if you want people, and and that's just like us throwing breadcrumbs, right? That's like a cookie here. Have a cookie, Jason. And, and to like, be fair, guys, because people are saying uh, not to interrupt, but people are saying like, oh, rewarding the griefing and and making comments like that. Uh, that can apply to any aspect of the game. The the top 10 cargo haulers the top 10 miners the whatever right is is these types of incentives can go throughout the in, the in, entire star citizen universe um so yeah yeah but i think like you know like we have a leaderboard right and the way the leaderboard has is like there's 300 players um and like if you would have 
directly compare this to World of Warcraft, like the way it works, right, is the top 1% of the people that PvP that season in that category earn like exclusive mounts, uh, mounts, which in this case would be ships and exclusive like titles, you know, which in this case would be like some spectrum flares or something like that to dress yeah. you up on spectrum really. Cause we don't have anything special in game like titles or anything. Right. But like, yeah, like, you know, maybe like a cosmetic skin, you know, like a, an exclusive to AC skin and tell me why can't there be exclusive AC skins if, we're getting if people are getting skins for being a quote unquote player guide that are exclusive, exactly. then why can't like, the what PvPers the fuck? get there? They and, should and be it, getting theirs, right? And it doesn't even have to just be like um there's there's what if you did rankings like like okay, we don't even have to go as far as the top one hundred. You can go hmm. and, and and you and I should probably kind of cut it off here. There's caller list is getting a yeah, little bit sure. longer and we've been going for about a half an hour. So oh, the yeah. I, you can even take the the current reputation system like in the PU and then rank up and then, you know, kind of crappy rewards for the first rank, blah, 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 blah. And only the best would get to the top rank somehow, uh, you know, create your point system however you do it. And when you hit that rank, like, yeah. And then you have a skin you can show off in the PU to show, like, you earn something. Like, it, it's it's badass. And, and those little things are what, what could really bring people over? And and to address what someone said in the chat, it's like, it can't just be the top players, but I completely disagree. Like, I think that... Well, that's what I the, just implied. Like, it, it shouldn't just be the top. Like, you could should get rewarded for playing the game. But the, yeah, sure. but the coolest like, you get rewards can go non- to the top, of course. Exactly, exactly. Because Star Citizen, like, we can't keep being this entitled, right? Like, yeah. you're going to have to play your... You're going to have to play and compete at a high level to get the high rewards, like... Sorry, you know, dude. Like, <laughs> exactly. Like, at some point, you got to get the joysticks out and play and learn the game if you want the exclusive stuff in that category, right? Like, yep. the, the exclusive stuff in this game can't just sit behind a $10,000 paywall. Right, like you're not, no, like that. We should be rewarding the best of the best, like, and that goes for the people in the PVE categories. That goes for the guys that are making this player guides that are getting their exclusive skins. You know, <laughs> like, you know, there should directly be PVE variants of that, like, which is fine. Like, make it from Xeno Threat and stuff too, but PVP as well. And I think that, yeah, to bring in new players, maybe add some exclusive to AC content like that rewards. You know, and ship skins are the the easy home run if you ask me the easier way to do it um yeah you know and what that could look like the top 200 players so that it's pretty reasonable to get in sure like or you know it doesn't have to just be the top 20 or anything like that but yeah i definitely think there should be something there to earn but hey i we it's funny we actually hit all the bullet points i wanted to anyway so nice nice i felt good about this so good stuff yeah. uh let me know when you when you get off stream i'll teach you about refueling so you can get your uh, arrow skin all right i have it man <laughs> I've, been, I've never refueled a bed, not once. All right, I'll teach you how it works, okay? Yeah, sure, sure. All right, later, All right, bro. GGs, dude. This was fun. <laughs> bye. All right, bye. Our next caller is Pandabot. Pandabot was specifically um, recommended by, by Virgil for this specific topic. So welcome, yeah, I don't Panda. Know uh, hey, what's up? I, you don't know why. Okay. No, I don't know. Um, all right, yeah, I, I'll uh, put goodbye then. We'll talk to yeah, you later. Just, just kick me out again. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I mean, I think I was always advocating for making generally the PvP experience as invi- like as good as possible for the newer players, right? They always wanted that if, you int- if you're interested in PvP, you don't have to go through th- like a very tough experience and basically almost getting hazed by all these PvPers, getting killed all over the again, again, right? To get any grip of like fun in pvp right mm-hmm. so i think cig i don't care about maps i don't care about anything even like atmo maps i couldn't care less about the only thing they should actually focus on is making the experience for new players as good as possible right so what does that because, look like um like i think virtually really, uh, gave a few takes on how to do it by like making that newer players have like less points um if you kill them but mm-hmm. i think that's very difficult to like implement in a in a good way, right? Because either you tie it to the to the leaderboards, but then like how do you show 
um, that, exactly that was the how much issue. point someone is worth, right? That's yeah, it, it's that kind was of like the a issue very that I to do it. yeah, like I forgot to bring that up because we just kind of maybe went on to something else. But how do you uh, when you lock on to a player? Like, is there an icon next to their name that they're like you or know like a barren arrow or something? It. Yeah, it, it would be weird to represent, but yeah, yeah. I, I think it's it's a it's it's a band aid fix. Um, for a problem that we have because we just don't have players, right? And I'm, I'm actually worried that we're at a point where it will be almost impossible to fix Arena Commander. Basically, the ship has sailed and we're just fucked, right? Because we don't have the player base to support any significant changes. Um, so, but like at least one change that um, I think, you, you know Star Cruiser, right? You also brought it up a few times, is that uh, just removing nameplates completely from Battle Royale, or generally any mode in AC would be a very good idea, I think. It's a very so good just idea. Just so you don't know who you're going to kill, right? So it, it's going to make, first of all, it's going to fix a few, like so many problems that AC has, right? Because AC has teaming, especially in BR, right? Yep. You have the thing where um, orgs just focus the good players in the lobby so one of them can farm the rest of the lobby, or you just have like, when someone is pissed, you just get your friends in and bully this one guy until he leaves, right? Mm -hmm. Like the whole teaming problem. If you don't have name tags, that's going to be way more difficult to actually do. And also the whole targeting newer players is going to be more difficult. Of course, you can still tell as soon as you start fighting the guy how easy it's going to be to kill, but yeah. you won't have the thing where... I see Salty Mike in the lobby. Now I will strict, like, go directly towards him and only kill him for the rest of the game, right? Just Which is what happened points. to me when I played. I yeah. mean, definitely, of course, because you're just easy points. That's, that's exactly. uh, the whole thing, right? Um, like, another thing, a lot of um, these people in my org play on alt accounts because they get targeted on their main accounts, right? Which is a little sad to see, right? Just because people don't want them. They have, like, bad experiences with each other because the whole PvP community is, as you know, it's all drama everywhere. So, Man. yeah, yeah obviously. Yeah. So, I think removing name tags is probably the, the, the best thing they can do. Um, okay. And that's why, for, like, just removing Battle Royale won't fix the problem either, because you will still have the same problem in Squadron, squadron battle, Battles, right? Because if Squadron Battles is about winning the game, um, you will just kill the easy targets in the anime team, right? You will just ignore the good guys and kill the easy targets because you get all the, uh, the points from it. And then sure. you still win let's the pause, game. Like if let's pause there for just a moment, though, because mm -hmm. the reasons I brought up, like the idea of banning or the idea of uh, uh, like a fleet composition for for a game mode like that, it, I, I I think you have to make some assumptions as well. That I mean, Panda, Virgil, anybody who's in the lobby ready to call here, we have to make the assumptions that CIG is going to do. Um, to the best of their knowledge, to the best of their abilities, how they want to mm -hmm. to make things like the situation that we're in now no longer exist. The the light fighter meta, whatever, um, that there would actually be some rock, paper, scissors scenarios in the game, and that instead of there being the, okay, go after Salty Mike, because he's not good at PvP, it would be go after the uh saber because our 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 uh fleet is better against their you know like our composition works well against this ship like uh again this was not the best on best tournament or anything like that but mm -hmm. when me and noodle were in that fight or flight tournament a lot of our discussion and, and i think the reason why like guys we had we had very good success in that tournament compared to everybody who was in that tournament up until the end we didn't die because we i think we discussed our strategies against the certain ships that we were going up against and which ones to go after first and all and and things like that and i think that's why we had the success that we did so that's why i kind of bring up those ideas is in a game mode that forced us to play against certain ships that you wouldn't normally play against uh choosing a strategy made sense and mm -hmm. i was just thinking like if they act, like you know if we make the assumptions that at some point arena commander will or at some point uh you know medium fighters heavy fighters would exist in the meta uh of pvp at all then yeah i mean i think you misunderstood me because i don't think that's okay, a bad okay. idea i actually really like banding ships i meant like removing battle royale won't fix the problem that's what i meant not Banning ships. I think banning ships is good. I, I'm, I think the, I'm uh, responding the, to your your point of 
even in squadron battle, it would be still a problem of going after the weaker. And I, uh, and what I'm saying is is that I would hope oh, yeah. that uh, fleet composition or uh, the rock paper scissor would exist. Where yes, I might be weak, but my ship might do well against yours to the point where my weakness would not. I mean, I uh, be I'm as not a much fan of a factor. Of rock paper scissors that hard like i i, I okay. never liked the idea of like very hard counters of ships where skill basically would because in that case skill wouldn't really matter anymore then if you just have the better so ship, not, the ship that counters mine sure then, we're not saying that we're not saying hard counters but oh, of course i think not, star citizen like, always wants to have the skill to oh yeah definitely over. right but i i'm saying that like in every other video game that exists that has any kind of pvp in it we should just remove names because i think that's going to fix most of the problems for it agreed um, Especially I, I the still, uh, toxicity. Yeah, definitely. I, I still think the best uh, thing they could do, and that's why I'm saying maybe it's too late to do it, would be like introduce skill-based matchmaking. But the problem is that, as Virgil already said, we have like maybe two full lobbies of AC mm -hmm. on a good day. Um, so if they would get something like that into the game, which I think would be the best thing, um, they need to like, give us some incentive to play AC. Exactly. I mean, that's why I ended that way with him. Is like in the end, the real issue here is, is the the lack of a player base. It's yeah, not and... that bad of a game. I mean, we played it for years before I mean... before P the PU. We played it for years, and a, and but people I would, liked I would argue it. that I would argue that uh, AC is a very lazy though. Like the of most course. we play. Yes. Um, like, I'm I'm a Counter Strike frog, so I real I would love the idea of squad and battles where you have one life. Like, you have, yep. it's basically round based, and you die, and you're dead for the round, and whoever is has the last winning ships, or you put some objective on the map. Hundred percent. Do you know how you how many round, times? Right? Do you know how many times this was suggested, and they were like, yeah, 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 we'll do it. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, and then just fucking pushed us aside and never never did anything like that. Arena Commander always felt. Like, just like any other aspect of Star Citizen, it always felt like there's potential there, but it's not good enough. Yeah, yeah. It's I don't, It's just so sad to say, because AC, in my opinion, is one of the best things that uh, Star Citizen has. Just because PU just takes way too much time. If yeah. I want to enjoy, like, I just want to have play like an hour of Star Citizen because maybe I'm working or I'm studying and I just want to relax in the evening. I don't want to go into the PU, especially as a PvP or currently, look around for like an hour, don't have any fights, and then just leave again, you know? Yeah. Like, AC is the good thing where I can just go in and get some content. The sad thing is just that AC is in a very, very bad state. Um, with, like, I think we already we, we said why. And we, we need, like, the thing they should do maybe, I think, just give us... Vandal Helmet 2.0. Put it yeah, in whatever AC it if is. you play AC. Yeah, it doesn't matter what. And I, I I wouldn't necessarily agree with the rewards just for the top players because most games nowadays that are very, very popular don't do that anymore, right? No. It's... You, you, they have like... Which is also good. I think that if you're... Let's say we have a, like a ranking system and you're a gold player, right? And you enjoy playing gold. And you, you basically... You climb... You're out of silver. You put like the work in to get out of silver. And then... Um, you're in gold and you're finally oh man I achieved it and I want a reward for that and then they can maybe get like a skin for the for like the gold like each tier of the the, the matchmaking system of the ranks gets like one skin or something right that if you finished the season if they had seasons or something I mean it's this is like the ba basic thing that uh, also called uh, Star Citizen uh, also called that every game has right the basic necessity that you play ranked you get reward for whatever skill level you're in I think mm -hmm. that's a good thing to do, right? We just we want to make it as nice as possible for the, uh, you know, for the newer players. Mm, yeah. So the, I mean, in, I don't know exactly how this works because I don't play a lot of games like that. But how I see it from the outside is, a lot of the, um, I guess the reward for players who are high ranked is simply saying that they're, yeah, platinum, right. I mean, it's also so weird that we have to get people to play AC because normally, like, when a game is good, you just play it. Like, I don't play Counter-Strike or Valorant or whatever for the yeah. sake of, like, getting a reward after. I don't... I literally do not care about the rewards. I enjoy the gameplay, and I think the main motivation should be, like, getting better. Yeah. Right? And this is just currently not possible 
because um, you play against the, the skill difference is just way too big, right? And that's why I'm saying we need skill-based benchmaking. So because even if you remove the name tags, if you go in there, you're still not going to kill anyone. You're just yeah. going to die less, but you're still going to like go against like a wall, hit the wall. You're not going to be able to kill anyone, right? Yeah. And this is just such a shitty experience uh, for newer players. Yeah, hundred percent. Man, it's like we just have to get players in, give them a reward to like lure them in, make like a little like hook them with the with a trap, like get them in, reel them <laughs> in, make the the game modes good so people actually enjoy the gameplay itself, and then make them play against people at their skill level, and then we have a secret sauce for a perfect game, right? And people yeah. should always see like CAC as something where. Even if you don't do PvP mainly, uh, or if you if you like PU more, it's completely fine, right? Not everyone has to like only play AC. But think about this for people that only play PU. If you don't have enough time to go into PU, you're not gonna play Star Citizen, right? Instead, Correct. just hop onto AC. If it would be that good, that that would be the perfect situation for everyone. Yep. And then I think you just take this uh, this I guess system or theme. And you, if if it's not dead, which I don't know if it is or if it isn't, you just carry it on to theaters of war, and then you build out something that. But I I, I yeah, think it's just dead I mean, at this point. It's weird. I think the problem with theaters of war is it's if it's a if it's going to be good, but the problem is that like the matchmaking system is not going to work for that because it's just the lobbies are too big. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like That's even true. Bet Battle Royale, I think is already too big lobby wise for for like a proper matchmaking system. Like I, I was saying it earlier, I think um, in in a lot of ways, PvP combat is like absolute trash content for like YouTube and Twitch. Uh, I think it's boring. I think um, most people can't I'm, relate to it, and I, I think it's I, dog shit. I think it's shit. just how it's packaged. I think in any yeah. game, if you if you uh, if you just like it doesn't matter what the game is unless it's only about PvP. If you just show gameplay, no one is gonna fucking watch it. Like exactly. if someone just mines without any commentary, I'm not gonna watch it. Yeah, I don't think it's not. a problem with PvP itself. I think it's a problem that SC content creators uh, just don't really know how to make good video. And I, not everyone, of course, right? But like a lot of the the stuff that I see that is not from the top creators. It's just either it's gameplay or very like there's no nothing that hooks me into it, right? Yeah. So I don't think this is a problem with PvP. It's just that PvPers suck at making videos. Maybe. I Except think it's A1, you know, he, he he some of his videos are when he hooks you in with the with the commentary, but I'm talking about the majority of the PvP videos I've seen is literally just uh I don't know, like the the just the video itself, you know, without yeah. much commentary over it. It's usually just ships exploding and there's yeah. no there's no context to to what's going on there and mm. I don't know. It's it's weird. I think this could help something like that, but it it'd be uh I, I think what needs to happen more is exactly what you said, like round based games. Um I mean we used to have Capture the Core, remember that? I, what I used to do with Capture the Core is I used to make my own games with that. Uh we made rules where only a certain ship could carry the core. So and it was a slow ship. So, because mm. I mean, the meta in that would be an M50 goes, takes the core, flies faster than everyone else wins, and it was just stupid. So we started making our own game modes and and stuff like that, and yeah. and it was more fun that way. But I think I mean, uh, objective game modes in general are just fun. Like Battle Royale is, I think, a good mode, but it shouldn't be the main mode, as Virgil well already said. Everything it's um, Battle Royale should be something you just want to kill people, right? I just yeah. want to like completely turn my brain off, go and shoot shoot some ships, right? That's what's, <laughs> what VR should be. Uh, yeah. And like Squadron Battles should be, I want to I wanna actually play Star Citizen. I want to have some fun. Then you want to play something like Squadron Battles. I mean, not the current one. I don't think the current one yeah, is Yeah, whatever either. the Counter-Strike uh, kind of clone of Star Citizen would be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> plant a bomb on the station. Like land there, get out, plant a bomb, and then you have to defuse it. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. <laughs> I think I mean even I think for AC, like stay in the ships points, would be right? better. Yeah, yeah, even like yeah. capturing points. Oh, I think Goloith said this at some point. I I don't know if it was his idea, but having like a point in the middle that you fight for, where you can repair, that would be cool. Yeah, like for battle royale or something, right? Like just something on the map where I just like points that pull me to these locations, right? Like in every other game, you have like in battle royales, for example, in normal battle royales from other games. Um, 
you have like uh, hot zones, right? Where you want to go because you get better loot there. So in Star Citizen, you could also move, make something like have areas where people want to fight around. So it's not just 1v1s. Yeah. Because Battle Royale right now is deathmatch. It's not Battle Royale. Because be, like, it, it's actually literally just fucking deathmatch. I don't know why they call it Battle Royale. If you think about it, because you respawn and they can only battle royale if you die, you're out, right? You, the, first, yeah. the guy that survives to the end wins, but in this, it's just it's glorified deathmatch. I think it was called battle royale before battle royales were created. Why would the, the source of this is that old? Fuck. I think so. <laughs> That's actually crazy. Even before PUBG. Before, well, I mean, battle royale was created in what? Uh, not even PUBG. Thirteen or fourteen? It was in. Um, it was in Arma. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. True. A and then H1Z1, and then PUBG. But didn't it start? No, no, didn't it start in, like, the uh, the DayZ mod or some shit? I think that was the first thing. Was it DayZ mod and not Arma? Well, DayZ was an I Arma mean, it mod, is, right? I mean, it is Arma, but I think it was specifically yeah. DayZ where they all start in the middle and, like, get some loot and then run yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. I mean... There, there, there's a few things, and I don't think they're actually they're that hard to implement. I mean, oh yeah, it was like, a Japanese actually... movie. That's what the whole thing was inspired by that that movie. <laughs> so it was. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, that, that movie is way older than uh, than Arena Commander. So, I mean, yeah, I don't just... know. Star Citizen is pretty old, so don't remind me. <laughs> no, yeah. uh, I mean, I, I was actually. I think I talked with you maybe like one and a half years ago about this like i was making like a third party matchmaking system okay and uh i was like doing it with some german orgs and it it worked kind of fine right where it was like you only it's only for duels and you fight each mm -hmm. other and then you can you can level up and stuff and you only fight people at your level the problem was just i, I wanted to hard. make it like better and stuff i mean everything worked it's just we don't have custom servers that's the yeah. biggest problem. And it's very difficult. Like, it works for groups like that because everyone knew each other, so you cannot really lie. But it was still based on trust. So if you say you win if and you didn't win, the whole system doesn't work anymore, right? Yeah. Because you yeah. Can, I, I cannot get any data from the servers. It's. Uh, I was thinking about making like own custom servers for Star Citizen, but I like I didn't want to put so much time into it, you know, because I still had hope that Star Citizen is going to implement it itself. And, like, I also want to have a little real-life... Uh, you know, university is already fucking me enough. I don't need uh, another project like that for it. Don't. But it worked. Don't it was, hope. It was actually great. <laughs> Best advice. No hope. No. <laughs> no, but I, it was actually, it worked well. And I, and that's why I think it's uh, it's going to work in Star Citizen if they would ever implement it. Because we had the good thing that, like, it was a little boring for the top guys because they own, because the, our player, the, we were like maybe 30, 40 guys. And... So at the top, only like three guys kill each other, right? They only yeah. fought each other because at some point the level was so far apart from the rest. But f actually, for all the the bad players, uh, it was much better. It was such a good experience, like yep. because they fought people at their skill level. It's like the the best example is I remember when you tried AC, not when the flight model changed, but before that, and you were playing with your viewers. Yeah, I was killing them before. Yeah, yeah, and you were it having so much so fun, good. and I yep. and I remember I joined. And you got really pissed, and then you yeah. said like you like you never like you made me never want to PvP again. And this is like you yeah. see that f fighting against people, even if you're not into PvP, PvP is such a fun thing, right? It's it's one of the few ways you can get like actual player interaction. Yep. And I think this is like Star Citizen is all about player interaction. That's yeah. that's the thing that makes it good. Like all the playing alone and everything, I don't think it's 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 like good, but the player interaction makes it. And that's like people are just. They have so like bad experiences with PvP, and that's what we have to change, right? And we're we going in the right direction, but it's not from CIG. It's more from the player base doing it and not CIG doing it, which is kind of sad, you know? But if CIG doesn't do it, it's never going to succeed. I think, like, that's... The, like, if there's any key yeah. feedback here, you, we the there has to be... Like, if you're going to spend money and effort on Arena Commander, if you're going to have a team, I don't care if they cost $100,000 a year, $200,000 a year. If it costs $1 a year, it is a waste of money if all you're going to do is create fucking Arena Commander maps and not and not drive players to the game mode that are outside of the 30 people that hang out in there every day. It just it cannot be. Hey, we're like 50 with all the alt accounts, okay? Yeah, okay, right? Like, it can't be like that. It has to drive players like 
me. Yep. It has to drive players like me, people and, who and, and, want to play the game, but are just like that. That experience with you was probably the la- like one of the last times I played because again, like I was having yeah. fun, I was getting kills sometimes, I was dying others, but and then I you come in and I have to ruin your day. I didn't no, even I target know. you. I know I you only shot you when you shot me and it's still still such a shitty experience but I think right? do you know what that I, I think I remember kind of what that was as well the shield effect the shield effect yeah yep. I remember so that was that. when you the shield so just blinds you and I was like dude this is this is terrible <laughs> yep this is terrible yeah so I still it, have that quote uh, hanging in my room from you saying nice. that I ruined your life today. nice that was great yeah I mean it it, it just that's that's the perfect example of what arena commander is though is like oh no, i was i was having also, fun and then bam one of you guys come and it just fucking ruins it for everybody but every it's also time the perfect example of what it could be right yeah because you had so i man i was so happy you having fun there like it was it, it mm-hmm. made my day man i like newer players hanging out and like all trying it like shooting and stuff right i just want people to enjoy the stuff that i enjoy yep. because it, i think everyone i actually think that everyone in Star Citizen, doesn't matter what you do, you can enjoy PvP. It's just you're, you're not going to enjoy PvP against me. You're not going to enjoy PvP against Virgil or Shadowmoss or Jace or whatever, right? Yeah. It's just not going to be fun for you. But fighting against each other, hell yeah, right? Hell yeah, of course. I mean, the, the next best thing from that was when uh, the Vandal Mask came around. That was the perfect example of a situation. I mean, it was a perfect example of a lot of other entitlement and bullshit, but there was, it was a perfect example of taking players like me, not, not PVPers at all that brought us into the fold and made us want to PVP each other. And then what did I get? I got experiences fighting against good players and I got experiences fighting against players like me. I got experience fighting players that were worse than me. And it was one of the best times I ever had playing the game. Yeah. You got that great video out of that. I enjoyed that. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. As again with the with the face, with the actual joy in Star Citizen. You, you don't you don't see that often in players, you know? No. When you actually see them enjoying the game. <laughs> That's a very rare thing. You definitely don't see it with me. Yeah. Very often. Was like, it, it takes yeah. moments like that for, for me to enjoy the game. Right, so. because it's it's all about self improvement and you don't really have that with the other gameplay loops in Star Citizen. Exactly. I think that's like the major thing that makes PvP so good is you actually get better. Like in mining I I don't think you get better at mining really. You get better at managing your your thing in the green area, but I don't think it's like that's no, it's not too easy. It's, you're gonna like I I learned that in a day, right? Yep. It's it's and with everything else, refueling isn't very difficult. You just like what what I, I find fun about mining is like taking it with a group and perf- and perfecting it. Uh, yeah, and doing it as efficiently it, right? as possible. Yeah, logistics and all that stuff. The actual act of mining is not the issue with mining. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, but, but if CIG hears this ever, please just make it so bad. New players don't have a bad experience. That's all we need. So yeah. because then PvP flourishes, AC flourishes, everyone's gonna have a good time. And you, you know? get, and and CIG gets a, a, a an actual testing environment that's worth I, paying I, attention I, to. I actually don't get why they. Uh, I mean, I don't know how how their logistics, how they do their stuff, but I don't because in other games that I was like alpha testing for, that were PvP games, mm-hmm. we had like um, an extra build that was literally just like a very like like AC kind of mode, where they changed stuff like every two weeks, right? We yeah. we tested it out for two weeks, and then we did what we didn't like, they changed, right? And then after two weeks, we we just tested it out, and I I, I don't understand. We we we're still like. It's it's crazy to me that after how many years, uh, like eight years almost, we're I don't know how long SC was actually in development, but like eight years since two thousand fourteen, we still don't know how Comet will be. We don't know, and like a, and that player, was the whole selling point of Arena Commander was all right, guys, we're gonna nail that. Like literally every word that comes out of their mouth has just like been a lie from that point forward. No, no, I mean, they, no, no, not no, on they purpose didn't. necessarily, but they were like, this is how combat was gonna be. We're gonna use Arena Commander to do that. Then we're gonna move on to the the PU. And it's never didn't been- did they do that at the beginning? Yeah, and I then- I remember them changing a lot at the beginning until 2.6 hit and nothing happened for like two years. Yeah, because- 2.6 hit and we had 2.0 and they didn't give a shit about arena commander anymore because arena commander didn't sell 2.0 did yeah but maybe arena commander didn't sell because the game modes just fucking sucked you know it's true it's like this is <laughs> yeah, the whole that's the part that they didn't get 
you know? Yeah, this is every time I talk about this with like other other PvPers with the whole matchmaking system, they always say that no one is playing AC and that's why it won't work. But you know, maybe people don't play AC because there is nothing like this in the game. Exactly. If if we would have it, maybe people would actually play AC. If if it wasn't bad, people would play AC because there's there's clearly player bases for games like this, these guys. Like yeah. PvP based combat, like there's there's Valorant, there's uh, League of Legends, there's uh, uh, Counter Strike. There's aren't like the, the, the most DCS, popular games. Yeah. The most popular games that it, like with the biggest player counts are mostly PvP games. Yes, right. I mean, you well, have, you maybe have not. And that might like, not be Diablo true. But yeah. Games. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it's like, I mean, no, but they're no. significantly like sized. Battlegrounds. They're, they're like significant the sized communities. Yeah. Right. And and it's it's like and people always misunderstand. I don't know why this is like like a mindset in AC that they always think that only the top, the really good guys would enjoy PvP, which is, is sad yep. to me. Right? It's it's just not true. If you look at every other game that people play, there's people at the the shittiest ranks that I don't that in my opinion when I see them play sometimes don't even have a fucking brain. They still enjoy the game, and that's yep. good. People should enjoy the game. And that's why I also hate how gatekeepy the PvP community often is, right? It's like it's another topic. But... Like, um, it really pissed, like, a lot of things, like, kind of tilt me every time I bring up Fight or Flight. Is that they make fun You're of... You're fighting streamers, it doesn't count. Exactly, and it's just like, fuck you. It, it, was, it was player on player, and all of those players were better than me. Every single one of Hell them, yeah. except for, like, two. So fuck you, <laughs> Okay. Like, honestly, ever, which one of you fucking people that make those comments every time would have bet that me and Noodle would have lasted the way we did and not had a single death until the final round? Okay? Like, give yeah. me a break. Everybody had us out in the first round. Everybody. So, I like, I don't, I, I don't get that at all. They, like, all this crap. And, like, and then the comments that he carried me and I stuff, think which I know is a joke just... in chat, but... I think it's the the people that currently do PvP, right? They either started very very early, yep. or they slugged through AC, right? Because it's as I said, like a lot, uh, if, uh, quite a lot of people that I've talked to see it. So if you want to PvP, you have to get destroyed repeatedly, yep, to 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 become a PvPer, right? Which I like for me, this is such a backward mindset because no other game does it this way. No other PvP yeah. game. In other PvP games, you you fight against people at your skill level, and then you improve, and then you fight people against like always. You climb up, right? It's like you slowly climb the ma ladder instead of running against the wall and trying to climb like a ninety degree wall, right? Yeah, that's the the big difference. That's why it's I, just like the gatekeeping stuff is so like out of all the toxicity in in the PvP community, it's it's the it's the calling everyone space dads, putting everyone down for being <laughs> bad, all that stuff that is probably one of the things that needs to change the most. I mean, I is like your, the space your, that thing, but the p putting people down, I think is very bad. But, but that's like, that's it, exactly the same as putting people down. Like, like I when I get called that, I immediately just kind of go, well, you know, I'm not, I like, mm. I'll, I'll never be welcomed in that community. Like Virgil, yeah. yourself, and a couple other people are the only olive branches that I have to, to even want to, be a part of it it's it's yeah. it's definitely one of the things that would need to change i think yeah I th but i think this is like a general thing you get with uh competitive yeah and, competitive, and that will right? never like uh, it's it's yeah. such an unrealistic uh expectation to have that that should change because it never would it's, yeah. it's every it should change, game is like I, this. I agree yeah it's i think it's also very sad it's just it's yeah. just people with fragile egos to be honest that's maybe. the whole thing maybe yeah but yeah. all right, Panda, we've been going for like 30 minutes, so we'll, we'll give some other people a chance, <laughs> but good insight, of course. And, and, uh, yeah, I mean, good talk, good talk. in the, in the end, I hope somebody hears this at CIG, if they're actively working on arena commander, I, I hope some of this feedback gets to the right places and, and they just understand that, God damn it, guys, it's not about what the game maps. looks like. We don't need <laughs> maps. I mean, I think, I do think that maybe we need a, uh, a, a one that has a varying of uh, uh atmosphere and that effect but other than that i don't think yeah, but even if they add that if the mode still suck no one is going to play it exactly know? like there just needs 
to make sense for people mm. like you need to incentivize and it needs to be fun and there's nothing fun about the current experiences now nothing yep if, sorry to be honest even for top players it's not fun no it's actually you're not doing fun, it right? you're doing it because there's nothing else to do yep that's literally it yeah I, All mean, right, I don't even play ac that much anymore but <laughs> i know somebody in travel is being well, toxic about it yeah that i that's my org leader. He's a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. All right, okay. Panda, we'll let you go, man. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye now. All right, our next caller is Zane. Zane, hello. Welcome back. Hello. What's up? Not much. So what do you think Arena Commander needs? Uh, so short, honest answer. Uh, I think it needs a different company to work on it. <laughs> but what about fire sprite they were great it, they made amazing count. maps it didn't come because they were still uh under cig's control so they were just doing groundwork stuff not actual decision making okay the, the thing is i believe that ac is the poster child of uh, cig's let's say peculiar way uh approach to development and it really shows in every way. But if I had to give a um, better answer, like a more realistic answer, mm -hmm. uh, it's three categories, three things, and it's uh, better game modes, better yep. incentives, and, and better gameplay. So uh, give some examples, of course. Yeah, the previous callers um, touched upon some of these points, especially mm -hmm. with the game mode stuff. Sure. And they they uh, had a lot of the same ideas I had, especially the uh, class based thing for uh, for AC. I think it's pretty good. Uh, it would make it um, so at least on the ship level, everyone is on the same ground. Uh, but at the same time, I think it would be an issue because yes, you would you would get feedback when a ship is banned a lot because it probably means it's overpowered. Uh, but First of all, uh, how would that work? Like, how, would they have to implement uh, just a subset of ships? And in that case, the subset would have to be shifted. Uh, and maybe in that subset, there is a ship that is stronger than the others. But if you add another ship, that ship would be uh, the better overall. Like, maybe you, you take out the arrow, and it looks like the Gladius is the best ship, but actually the arrow is the best ship oh, in so the game. You were so what you were saying is if we if you add that banning of a certain ship during that match um well i just want to be clear because i don't think people understood maybe what i was saying there is you don't ban them entirely from the game mode it's a choice for each lobby just like yeah, yeah, i think I that's how league of legends work I, I think you know but i i don't think everybody that was listening knew so every every lobby that you end up in um you know you you either come in with your group or or you join randomly with a with another group and it's the choice of what what you want to ban but uh say every time it's automatic it's the arrow every time what you're saying is well then the gladius will look like the best ship and the gladius might get a nerf when it doesn't deserve one mm, not really i mean it depends on uh how the class system is implemented because okay. let's say you have um in a lobby each team can pick up like um uh, a light fighter, uh, yep. like three light fighters and uh, a heavy fighter and some other type of ship. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, does the category, does the light fighter category contains all of the light fighters in the game or just a subset of them? Uh, well, it should contain all. Oh, okay. Yeah. And if that's the case, uh, what's the loadout on them? Because loadouts are also uh, pretty important when it comes to balancing Good. the meta. Very good point. Yes. Um, do do you do you also have to ban certain uh weapons, right? That that would take too much though. It'd be I too mean, complicated, yeah. 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 So good, maybe good, we very could good have point. like someone in chat before mentioned, and I think it was also an X C A G dev, he mentioned that there could be a point system where like each ship and weapon and shield type has a coast and you have uh, like let's say 100 points and you can spend them on uh specific stuff and like maybe very good uh, idea some weapons cost more 
And if you always pick them up, also CIG can see, oh, uh, they are always picking up this, uh, this gun, even though it costs a lot. So what's, do we have to increase the cost or do we have to nerf the, the gun? Can I pause you but, there? Um, we have Reckon Game now. It would be a, a perfect scenario to kind of throw away everything that they've done with Reck at this moment and apply that to, to the, the current game modes. And then I also have to ask you, um, because I don't play it. This is a Counter Strike mechanic, correct? Like there's uh kind there's of. like buy rounds and like everybody starts with pistols, right? And then they move up and then all of a sudden people are buying like snipers and stuff later on. Um I believe that's how it works, but I don't know. Mm, yeah, and, and you make points if you kill people or uh win the match. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like I don't want to, I don't want to add too much complexity to the system because I know like all this stuff is fun fiction anyway, and it will never be in the game. So if we let our imagine uh, go on too far, like it's for sure it's never gonna happen. And also it, it will, it would add a lot of um, work on CIG's end because they they'd have to balance this stuff. I mean, like Counter Strike over the years has changed the balance for weapon costs and how much you get for doing specific actions a lot of time and it's really complex to like it creates a whole other meta on top of the existing meta if you know what i mean i i absolutely do but in the end uh there's a specific team's job to balance the weapons and and uh yeah <laughs> i don't know it, it, it like, is. is there any better way to find out um that information than than the examples that we're giving here right like if people are buying that certain weapon let's say uh you know laser p repeaters right now it would it would it would be a really good indication for and then and then in the pu they also have statistics and metrics that are uh leaning that way then it's like oh okay well this is something we really need to look at here and then you know you have conversations with your players and uh you know, Q and A session, whatever, and then you you make your choice. Yeah, I don't know. It the just seems to make sense. This, the, the problem with this kind of system is that ideally we should make uh, we should make it so that the data we gather from AC uh, can be reflected almost one to one to the PU. And yes. like the the problem is okay. So let's say uh, we have a like the most powerful gun in the game. Okay. And in AC, in AC, it costs a lot of money. The, the thing is, in AC, obviously, you will die a lot. And when you die, it's almost certain that you lose the gun. I mean, there is no insurance. And also, everyone has the same points because everyone starts with like 100, 1,000 or whatever. In the PU, uh, you don't die that often. So maybe uh, even if that gun is really expensive, it is not as bad as in AC, because in AC, if you pick that gun too many times, then you run out, run out of money for that match. Sure. And, and yeah, and, and like there is no, um, no insurance. And in the PU, everyone has a different account balance. Maybe I just started, maybe you, you've been playing for 10 years and have billions of AUVC. So the penalties for losing that gun could be not yeah. as important. I mean, I, I don't think we should look at them as like, like any information they gather shouldn't be looked at in, I, I think the, the right phrase is like in a vacuum. It should all be looked at as uh, like additional information to add to uh, decision making that they may make. Uh, the problem here is that already now that like the situation is is pretty simple because you basically have just the PU and you have the PVP community give tons of feedback. We barely see any uh, changes to the balancing. So imagine mm -hmm. if on top of that, there is a meta that's mm, built around AC. So CIG needs to understand all oh, the PVPers are saying this because they mostly pay, play AC and in AC, uh, this might be a bigger issue than if you, like I don't really trust them to be, uh, to, to do this job quite, in the right way so yeah and the other thing is for the game mode i think that they should get away from uh kill based like uh kill based matches so you win if you uh kill everyone to, yeah kill everyone before the other team 
there should be objectives. And I think internet uh, would be um, a good example to copy. Maybe have like two bases where maybe there are uh, carriers and you can, uh, each team can, can go there, uh, repair, refuel, rearm. And the objective of, of the other team is to destroy the carrier or mm -hmm. some, some other thing in that proximity. And that would be pretty cool because we could also add uh, multi crew ships and um, refueling ships, is... mining ships, right? Because you have to mine to gather the no, the... no, no, whatever. No, not, not, oh, come not on, that no, no mining. Come on, bro. No mining. No mining. No, I mean the, the torpedo ships. I was like the retaliator, right? So well, maybe... how do we repair, refuel, rearm if you don't have the material to do so? A quanta will work on the materials. Uh, Quanta will. Okay, okay. Tony Z will save us yet again. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah. Th th those are the game mode stuff I would like to see uh, to make it better. Then there is the gameplay side of things, mm -hmm. which I think is being neglected almost as much as AC, maybe a bit less. I don't believe this is personal, obviously, that the flight model is in the right spot. Uh, the radar. I mean, there is a lot to work on. Mm. Ballistics, I think, should be reworked. I don't really like, like, I despise ballistics in. Okay, uh, but this, like, let me scene. cut. Let me cut you off. I want to do a better job of cutting people off when they're getting slightly off topic. Th this is just general star citizen problems. This isn't what arena commander specifically needs. So I would say, like, try to stick to the topic here a little bit more well, with that stuff. I'd argue it's needed for AC too because if AC was fun, like was really fun to play, I'd play it even in, in its current state. The problem is it's not fun for me because I don't really enjoy the current flight model, but as I said, this is personal. So I think yeah. if they improved it, I would, and I had the impression that, okay, this flight model is what the final game will have. So I'd be more motivated to jump in and get better. And I know no excuses, but I mean, the, the, the current state of things, I, I don't really want to get into, into it. But yeah. Avenger 1 would not be happy with you. I know, I know. What, no and, excuses. I mean, this also um, is part of the better incentives part because when I see uh, was initially created, one of its uh, goals, like it had two, two goals mainly, uh, or maybe three, like uh, have something people could play, uh, get feedback for the flight model, and okay, maybe, maybe it's just two, okay. So make something that people can play and have fun while they were working on the MMO part and uh, gather feedback from the players. The problem is right now I see it's not fun uh, and they don't really gather feedback from anywhere. Like uh, we have maybe once uh, every three months uh, balancing on a couple of ships and that's it. So I, I believe even for the PVP community, if they felt that uh, their experience and their feedback from AC play uh, was uh, being listened by CIG, they play more to to make the game better, but that's not that that's not happening. And so they they're like, yeah, whatever. We play from time to time when we want. Not much of a point to it. And then obviously there is for casual players, there should be stuff like vandal mask or whatever skins to to make them jump in because the, at this point we need something if we want AC to be played again. Yes, we need some, to start you, it somehow. You, yeah, you have to kickstart it exactly. There's no, there's. There's no point in this conversation unless there is a driving force back to the game mode uh, from the current player base, which has constantly been growing in the PU, yet Arena Commander is still the same 15 people from fucking 10 years ago. Or or the same amount of people, but the, the best players 10 years ago, Hydro, Big Bang, like all these people, like they're all gone. Except yeah. like Goloith is like the only one that... I, is a name I recognize from when I played Arena Commander every day. Yeah, and rightfully so, because like imagine for 10 years playing a game and hoping it gets better. Uh, because 
if you think about it, like the flight model and the flight experience, ship combat was one of the main focuses for both the MMO and Squadron. Like this is one of the things that pisses me off the most is that people say, oh, but Squadron is a focus, but Squadron is supposed to be about ship combat. So how come we don't see updates every patch to it? Like they, they've been talking about slowing down ship combat uh, components and whatever for years. Like when they implemented the the new flight model, they said, "Oh yeah, with this new flight model, we can iterate a ship faster than before. Every ship will have uh, its own feeling." But yeah, they don't really do that. Same with capacitors. Like they said, "Oh yeah, for now, uh, all ships are tuned by um, by class, but in future, uh, they will have a, they, their own flavor." Mm. I don't think that's really the case. Yeah, I don't know. I mean. We'll have to see, but I just think that it's it's a, a good opportunity for them to, like, I know you're not happy with the flight model, I know you're not happy with a few of these things, but it, it seems like the, it's so funny because, like, what you said is what Arena Commander was supposed to be five, six, ten years ago. It was supposed to be, while the MMO yeah. is being developed, this was the opportunity to balance the flight model, balance the weapons, balance everything around ship versus ship combat. And also get better... Uh, so that once the MMO comes online, you can yeah, kill you other can players. exactly that you would be uh, able to defend yourself or attack other players for whatever reasons you may have. Yeah. But, all right, Zane. It feels like a stopping point. Is there anything else that you wanted to to add? No, not really. But I okay. wanted to compliment you for having the previous callers. I think that was the right call. Mm. Uh, they had a lot of good points and. It's always nice to have people that have been playing this game for years, especially in the PvP uh, field. Yeah, I mean, so, like, I, I yeah. can't... I, I will never... I, the point of this show is that um, I just react to YouTube videos now because the game is, isn't that fun to play. So I, I don't play the game. I'm not an authority on the game at all. Uh, I can I can give what I think my experiences have been, but I, I don't have a lot of experiences in the game. And I, my my idea is like I need to change that uh, very much so because it's it's uh, getting to the point where it's like excessively bad that I don't play the game to and and I feel like I'm I'm uh, falling behind on knowledge and understanding of the game and all those these things. Um, so I need to bring people on that do understand and 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 these are the people that. I feel at least are the authority. I'm sure, you know, somebody will make a comment and say the two people we brought on are are not good enough and blah, 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 blah. Well, guess what? It's an open forum show and you can always come on and there's plenty of people here that I see that I know are PVPers in the chat and they're not in the queue. So, you know, maybe don't type it on the keyboard in your comments and you can get here on the mic and and uh, share your thoughts because it's completely open and, and I'm, I'm, you know, aside from a few people, there's nobody's banned from from the show king gear we're talking about you so all right zane i guess all we'll right. let you go bye mike bye bye man and and for the people who get the king gear reference you're uh you're a, you're a, a true hero uh rum get welcome man how's it going uh, it's going good uh so what are your uh what are your arena commander needs what would what would bring you back well um this might sound bad, but I I, I kind of want more maps. Okay. Bring um. It. So so my perspective isn't the combat one like the previous callers you've had. Uh, mine is more the the racing aspect of uh, Arena Commander. And okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh dude, like Rumget, I I had a, a total brain fart. Like dude, we used to do the race. We used to talk about racing and yeah, yeah. Yeah. What happened? Um. Uh. It. Uh. Star Citizen happened. Yeah. Um, so I, I've had, um, I think three year break from star citizen. Yep. And, um, I jumped in with some of the XGR, uh, channel yesterday. And I also, uh, hung out with the crack club guys on one of the P, uh, P, uh, PU, um, maps that dead, uh, the data signed. Okay. And. Honestly, it's such a fucking hassle. Like, yeah, it's why I don't do it. I still loved racing, but uh, the current m little racetrack looks cool, but it still just isn't like all this. Like, I gotta 
click this thing on and do these recordings and all this stuff. Like, uh, I'm I, I I'm still not sure I'm ready to jump in yet. Yeah. So yeah, it's I'm I'm in the same boat there. Like I don't I don't care. Um, for the like the leaderboards are broken. You know, I, I it's it would, just, it would just be so nice that that if like if they could t take their their small arena commander bubble and like take out the individual uh, racing tracks that people have designed into PU uh, would make it a lot more enjoyable for me to go in and actually practice uh, for the events because as it is right now a lot of the tracks are you need to either have a Carrick or 890s that where you can respawn in and yeah. then park it somewhere near where the racetrack is designed uh, where you can spawn ships. Yeah, it's too much work. And then, yeah, it, it's so at least from a practice standpoint, I think it's uh, honestly, it makes it a little more exciting um, that events themselves are in the PU. Yeah. But uh, from a practice standpoint and the fact that it's a video game, I, I don't think it makes sense not to be able to practice uh, the maps or the racetracks themselves in a single player mode. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's that's uh, completely fair, I think. And, and yeah, to a totally different line that I thought we were talking, that we were going to talk about today, but the thing that I played the most in arena commander was racing uh, or at least the thing that I enjoyed the most. Cause I, I think at a point the combat just got, again, I think it's, I think ship combat sleeper. I'm, I'm sorry. In, in a lot of ways, I think it can be really sleeper and I think it's improved over time, especially with capacitors and things like that. But back in the day, I thought it was just, you know, it was just click down your mouse and that was it. And it I, just wasn't I think... exciting. And and racing, for, I, I did. I found excitement. You were always uh, for, chasing for yourself me, with the uh, with combat. It's just there's so many other really good combat games out there. Sure, most the large majority don't have uh, spaceships or planes or something like that. Yeah, but the ones that have it, like uh, DCS, War Thunder, uh, they're just better. Are, are just more fun. Yeah, at least for me personally. And uh, or some ghosts, as uh, Speedweed is putting in chat, would also be really nice. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that's my take on what I would look like uh, Arena Commander to have. Okay. Would you just to to bring it to the theme of of what most of the show was? What would mm -hmm. it take to bring you to play uh, the combat versions of the game? Um. So. I've I've done it in the past and and honestly it's um the most fun I had doing combat was in a M50. Oof. And and that's because I I knew how it handled I could you know I could outmaneuver people with it back in the day. Um where it, like I would still lose to the you know top people because mm -hmm. I'm very bad at aiming, but this that's like I had a fighting chance in a ship that was more maneuverable than the one that they were in. Yeah. Um. I, I but I I I don't know how it is uh, now. Um. I think uh, desync is a problem. Um. Both for Arena Commander and the PU, uh, in terms of combat, and so I think being having that worked on would be uh, very nice. And then I would probably need to, uh, as I did in the past, have someone uh, be a, a semi coach for me personally, because yeah. I I've done racing. I don't mind crashing and dying a horrible amount uh, of times, um, but like. There's also like the intent behind actually doing it, right? Like, do I go in and just fly the track and and that's fun, or do I go in there to try and beat myself and whoever is better than me? I would assume it's the second one. Yeah. So, like, I would probably find someone who is better than myself in combat, and then, like, 
do small practice sessions with them. Um, so as as horrible as it sounds, uh, uh, like I don't know if the guide system would be a good thing for that. Uh, Maybe. Uh, but uh, like I would probably find a, a more combat focused community and jump in there and because I have like the other guys talked a lot about how like gated the combat community is, but personally I found at least back in like 2.6. Now that is a long time ago. Very. Um, a lot's that, changed, dude. <laughs> yeah, but at least back then, like, sure, some of them were definitely elitist, but there was a fair few who were willing to uh, teach a willing noob. Yeah. Or at least say, say okay, it's like, for example, I tend to do predictable lines because that's what I was used to in racing. Because you want predictable lines so that you, you know, do this as much as you can, the same line every single time. But that is bad for combat. Who knew, right? Yeah. Uh, doing nice, smooth lines so people can shoot you. Uh, like, but that's one of the things that with my previous stuff that I've done in, in terms of racing. So yeah, that's I uh, also I'm very bad at aiming, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean this has nothing to do with the arena commander at this point. This is just like no. your personal like I would play Arena Commander if I was better at Arena Commander. I don't think is the, what Arena Commander needs. Yeah. I, uh, exactly. Like um like you're saying, it's I, I would need to go practice it and then uh, if I found it fun, I would probably play it more. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Rumgut, let me let you go. And yep. uh, yeah, more support for racing. Can't Yee. can't disagree with that one. Yep. All right, brother. Be good. It was great talking to you again. Yee. All right, my, bye, bye, man. All right, and our final caller for the day, Kaizen. Kaizen, what's up, man? What's up, brother? How you doing? I'm good. Uh, I want to congratulate you and your callers. They've made excellent points. Uh, you know, new modes would be fantastic. Better mm -hmm. rewards would be fantastic. New maps are great. Uh, limited ban rounds are fantastic. Here's my hot take. Hot take time. None of it's going to make an ounce of fucking difference. The fact of the matter is, if you come from, like, I, I played EVE for years, and EVE was one of the first games that they really came with it and just said flat out, players are content, period. So you can implement all of these changes, which CIG's not going to do because that would take a lot of extra time and work, whatever. The fact is, unless you get cheeks in seats, you're not going to change anything. And I think you've called that insightfully as well as most every one of your players have said, well, yeah. I think we should do this, this, and this. But until players come, it's not going to change. No. The fact of the matter is, is the current system is built around 30 sharks that play every day. Yep. And one guppy a month that wanders in, gets their dick in the dirt, and then says, well, I'm never doing that again, and leaves. Yep. So you have the same 30 people that populate this entire mode. Until that changes, there's CIG could put ten billion dollars into this mode and nothing's going to change. So, yeah. focusing on just the the germ of how do we get cheeks and seats, I would contend that one thing that they've missed all along is that there's a huge mindset difference between the sweaty PvP crowd which is the elite of the elite of the elite self-selecting and whittles down. And then once you get to the top of the mountain, you hang out there and congratulate yourself for having the biggest dick on the internet. And then you eventually get bored and go away because it's just repetitive. And then complain that the game sucks, which is a lot of what the PvPers yeah. do. When, when in a lot of ways, guys, you've made it suck and, for and everyone then, else. Sure. And then the massive wall of MMO players that are by percentage largely care bears they are largely goal oriented don't say care bears the youtube comments Bro, are going to get so upset care. let them i let no em. i use the word too like okay. you 
Yeah. So what? But I, I'm a Care Bear. I'm a Care Bear. I love the industrial side of Eve. I love mining. I love doing all kinds of shit in in Star Citizen, man. Like, it's. I'm not saying that pejoratively. I'm saying that as yeah. there's a two different mindsets. So the point that I'm making is, before I wander off on this one, uh, how do you harness the mindset of that other crowd, the MMO player, to actually funnel people into AC? And the way that you do it is the way that every MMO has done it going back for two decades. You have what do you call a... a um, what is that thing where you go and get achievements? There you go. You get achievements. So... Every round, 317.2, 318, 4.0, whatever. At the beginning, when it drops, CIG says, here's the achievement list for this round, for 317.2 or for 318. You have to do, you must, you know, do this many matches of this. You must do this. You must do that. And it could be, you know, it could be general shit that's just good in PTU or P or sorry, PU as well, like mining or doing this or doing that. But specifically with regard to arena commander, do okay. X number of matches, do X number of matches with Y ship, do X number of matches with Y ship and Z loadout, whatever. And at the end of it, like, because you said earlier, you said, hey, like, we have to just understand the fact that if we want to do free skins or, or cool stuff like the guide thing, it's going to be the best of the best players. So that's great. You definitely want to reward. You have to have two reward tracks. You have to have the yeah. reward track that goes towards the killers. But you yeah, also rank have one to have rewards. You have to have a reward track that goes for the guppies as well so that they want to actually come in and subject themselves to this. So if you yeah. say you have to do X amount uh, and some of the things achievements should just be play in X amount of things. You don't even have to win. And then some of the other achievements should be you have to win certain whatever. Yeah, to, and to we, entice you to get better. So you put out a, a long laundry list at each patch, each every three months, four months, whatever, six months, if they start slipping, who knows? You put out a list of you must do these things and you put it out there and then at the end, if you do all of those things, you check the little boxes like a good little boy, you get a badge. You get a little thing that could go, that you could, I don't know where you would show it off. You could show it off on Spectrum. You could show it off whatever. And that would lead in the long term, that would make people, because I'm telling you, man, the MMO mindset, you put a fucking badge to it, people will show up and be like, I want my badge. I'm going to grind this out. It's the MMO reputation system has proven itself over and over and over. And you just put a badge out there and that's you're going to get all of a sudden because you made a very, very key point earlier when when you were talking to the first guy where you said what we need somehow is for the masses to come in and over flood the, the group of sharks. Yeah. So if you take if you bring in. 10,000 guppies because like I we you've, we've all been saying this game is growing so fast that there's tons and tons of the MMO side the PU players out there now yeah you bring in 10 million guppies and you implement a rating system to where you know the sharks are lobbied with the sharks and the guppies are lobbied with the guppies you're going to end up feeding some of those guppies they're going to become mid-sized fish and before you know it you have an actual ecosystem of players and once you do that once you have a spectrum of between the absolute dog shit players, but hey, I'm having fun. And then the, hey, I'm actually not that bad. And hey, I'm actually pretty good. And hey, I'm now the elite. Once you have that spectrum of players, then when you make changes to modes and maps and, and all of these different things, it actually has a real effect. And you're getting actual feedback on, hey, man, yes, if you're the best of the best, if you're the GOAT, Yes, you can use this weapon and you'll get by just fine. But for the average players, it's like the difference between in 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 the elite. You've got you know fixed weapons, gimbaled weapons, and and uh uh you know um the full on computer controlled weapons. Yeah, uh, turreted weapons. So like, if you see that people at this strata only want to interact with this type of weapon. But people at this strata lean towards that type of weapon. That helps you make better decisions, too, on like, Very good intelligently point. balancing things and changing. Because what's best for the best isn't what's best for everybody. Yeah, and in 
some cases, sure, that that I think will definitely happen. Because, I think like, so. I think somebody made a... Oh, God, who... It, so I, I was reading chat a little bit while... We, not while you and I were talking, while somebody else was, and uh, they mentioned that there was, like, a a nerf made to the Redeemer because it was the most powerful PvP ship in the game. Um, and there's, like, all these other factors as to why that would be the the, the reason. Um, but it just it just kind of tells me that their their metrics are skewed and broken and this is this would be a good way to to kind of resolve that issue in a lot of ways which is cool yeah i mean just give give care bears something to checklist for and once that gets them there that's the main that honestly i see that as 99% of the problem is just you need to get people in Agreed. And, and then, then everything else changes. we yeah, and, and then everything else we discuss is sure. I think they have to make points. the improvements. I think they have to make the improvements and get people in at the same time. Personally, like there's some improvements have to be made. Like battle royale is terrible. The wor- the worst. I, I and I agree with just fucking remove it. To be honest. Okay. And then but some I, I, some slight changes to to the other modes and. Yeah. And and. The, the like the reward track stuff i absolutely agree that for those guppy or not guppies for those sharks for the guys that the top 30 or whatever mm-hmm. absolutely if they're in there all day every day and giving you data at what the metrics are for the the top tier operators they should get a skin or a thing a limited time thing or a whatever something you know some reward for them as well i just there there needs to be there needs to be rewards reason. that are unattainable for for your casual player. I'm You're, sorry, absolutely. But there you, needs to be also rewards that are attainable for the uh, casual. A hundred percent, hundred percent. There has to be a driving force for both player bases. And games that that only do one and not the other are dog shit games. Period. Mm-hmm. Period. So, yeah. right on, man. All right, Kaizen. All right. I think that was an awesome way to end it, and and I appreciate it. And I thought we got a really wide spectrum of people, and and you're definitely one of them. So thank you so much. Have a good one. Yeah, man, be good. That was that was fun. Uh, you wouldn't think that on July seventeenth, twenty twenty two, we would be talking about Arena Commander and it be uh, a really good conversation, a really engaging conversation, and one that is relevant and viable for Star Citizen today. And I think we achieved that. Uh, uh, you know, on Twitch, I. I I can't avoid the view count for some reason. There's some, it's showing up in a different place. I don't usually have my view count up. I think we are much, much lower than I would normally be on an answer to the call podcast, probably because the discussion was about arena commander, but it's still not an insignificant number. And the, the, the chatter and chat was very engaging. The, the colors were, it was easy to get them in. It wasn't difficult as it is sometimes when it comes to an answer the call podcast a lot of you guys that watch on youtube may not know how difficult it is to put these shows together each week sometimes to get uh, a discussion going i thought the first two callers uh virgil and panda really really helped with that so thank you guys for coming on i reached out to them um during the week and it it is a this this could be a really special part of the game and I, I really hope it is. And it, there's just so many reasons why. Uh, you get you get the ability for, for the people who are competitive to be competitive. You get the ability for people who want to get better to get better. Uh, you get the ability for people who want to grind achievements of some kind to grind achievements. And... Um, yeah, I I think it's just important. I I think people undervalue the importance of Arena Commander because of what it's become. Um so yeah, that's that's kind of the the uh the thing here. And I I hope, you know, uh the DJ button the 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 dev who works on Arena Commander pretty exclusively it sounds like, um along with I I'm assuming the team, the Arena Commander team is uh is here and listening and and hopefully the feedback that all of you guys provided not only in in chat but but in the calls are are heard and and uh and get taken in and and are 
or acted on quickly because I think that's the problem with CIG in, in a lot of ways is, is they listen, they hear us, they take the feedback, they really do. But the 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 action is is the problem, and and I hope the action isn't arena commander maps. I hope the action is is actual action on improving the modes and and um, creating incentives to play the game mode. Because uh, no offense, uh, a dollar spent on arena commander right now is a dollar wasted. Don't waste our money. Don't waste our time. I I'd rather have. Honestly, at this point, I'd rather have them working on Squadron 42 than Arena Commander if they're not going to create incentive to play the game. That's all, like, in my opinion, that's all of the effort that should be spent on Arena Commander. Otherwise, just send that team over to Squadron 42 like they do the rest. But as always, guys, that was Answer the Call. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you're watching on Twitch, it'll be up on YouTube in a few hours. If you're watching on YouTube, you can always kind of come on and join the show. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Salty Mike, as well as Discord.gg slash Salty Mike. That's where we do the calls. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, make sure you hit subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff down below. And I'll see you guys next week.